Hi everyone. My name is Allison. I'm a registered dietitian and I'm here to teach a nutrition class on meal planning for Bounty and Soul. So I'm just going to give you the basic structure of the meal plan right now. And of course, everyone is different. We all have different preferences. Some of us have food allergies, some of us are vegetarians, some of us are keto or whatever it is. So I'm just going to show you the structure and throw some ideas out and then you are welcome to mix and match and make it your own as you see fit. I hope everyone's having a good holiday right now. I'm between Christmas and New Year's, but um, I think, you know, not a lot of people want to do meal planning around Christmas time or Thanksgiving, but it's a nice way to start the new year to start thinking about planning your meals, shopping lists and things like that. So I'll show you the structure. You can use that to create your own meal plan. And then from that, you can make a shopping list, do your meal prep and all of that. It takes a little bit of practice, but it's pretty simple. Um, and this is gonna be the meal plan that I use for my eating disorder clients. Um, and the reason I'm mentioning that is because it's kind of a lot of food and not everybody is gonna have time to eat that often, eat that that much quantity or eat that frequently. And so that's okay if that's you, if you're like, oh my gosh, I don't know how I'm gonna have time to do this. That's totally fine. Um, this is a structure to sort of give people an idea of what normal eating looks like or what normal eating could look like for people who have basically been starving themselves. So um, then you can take those and move them around, these snacks and meals and move them around to different days if you like, but we'll talk about that as we go along. So hope everyone has a piece of paper and something to write with, unless you have a really good memory. It would be helpful to write this down. So this is their general rule of thumb is the rule of threes. This is the rule of thumb for meal planning. And there's three rules in the rule of threes. Hopefully you guys can see that. I don't know if you really can. It looks kind of blurry to me. Um, maybe if I don't have as much glare, you'll be able to see a little better. I don't know if you can see that. So anyway, I'm talking, you can hear me, <laughs> and we'll just do the best we can. So the three rules and the rule of threes, the rule of threes are three meals a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, three snacks a day, and three food groups per meal. So if you were my private client right now, I would ask you what are the three food groups? And we'd talk about that. And I sometimes do a lesson on that as well, um, which we can do another time. So, but I'll just go ahead and tell you the, the three food groups are actually the macronutrients. So I'm just gonna write macros up here. So if you know what the macronutrients are, they are carbohydrates, proteins, and fat. You could also call fat oils or lipids. Those words are more or less interchangeable. Um, however, I like to use the word fat because I think it has a negative connotation. So I'm trying to steer people away from associating fat with being something bad. I also try to steer people away from associating carbs with being something bad or any type of food really from being something bad, unless you're having a specific reaction to it or a specific health problem. <clears throat> Your bonus round is vegetables. So the reason I don't put vegetables in the meal plan is because they don't contain calories. Calories are a unit of energy. That's what our body burns as fuel. And so vegetables, with the exception of starchy vegetables, starchy vegetables would, would count as a carbohydrate. So things like potatoes and corn, um, rutabagas, turnips, root vegetables, things, parsnips, things like that um, would count as a carb. So non-starchy vegetables are not one of the macros. They have a negligible amount of calories, which you might think is a good thing. And vegetables are important. That's why I put them as bonus rounds. They're important to get for other reasons, but they're not gonna fuel your activities through the day. 
They'll give you vitamins and minerals and fiber and water, but they're not going to give you the fuel that you need to burn as energy. Okay, so the structure is this um, marker is dying. So the structure of the meal plan is breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, dinner, snack. So as you can see, that's eating six times a day. And not everybody has time to do that. Uh, I know I don't have time to eat six times a day. Um, but the reason that we structure it this way is to show you that it's normal to eat three meals a day. And it's also normal to eat snacks between meals. So don't feel like, oh, I've already eaten lunch and it's not dinner time, so I better wait. It's totally normal to eat snacks. Snacks are not supposed to fill you up completely. They're supposed to just tide you over. And actually, if you feed yourself consistently, that helps to keep your metabolism up. Okay, so since it's three meals, three snacks, and three food groups, for each meal, we're going to do one, two, three placeholders so for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. For snacks, I do two because it's not really necessary to get all three food groups in the snacks since they're smaller nourishment. But I don't want you to just be eating the same thing. So I put two in there just to give you more variety because a lot of people with their snacks will just eat one thing. They'll eat one piece of fruit or a bag of chips or some crackers. And it's like, okay, we'll add some peanut butter to your fruit or add some cheese to your crackers or add some, you know, whatever. Add some nuts to your, I don't even know what I said. <laughs> chips and salsa or chips and guacamole or something to add more variety and round it out a little bit. So let's just come up with some ideas. So let's think about breakfast, what would be a typical breakfast for people? A lot of people do eggs, right? So maybe two eggs. So that could be your protein. And then on the side, you could have some toast, which would be your carb. And then you could have butter, or peanut butter, which would be your fat. So butter's a fat, peanut butter is a protein fat, actually. Um, a lot of things actually are protein fats, they're combined, so they can count as both, but, um, but butter would just be a, a fat. So I know that uh, Bounty and Soul is a plant-based, like pretty much vegan organization. So you can definitely um, make this a vegan meal plan. Um, I'm just kind of coming up with basic ideas that I think might be typical for people because I know not everybody watching this is vegan. Um, so like alternatively, you could do cereal, which would be your carb, and then some kind of um, non-dairy milk alternative, which would be, depending on what it is, would be your protein. And maybe add some nuts or seeds for your fat. Or something like that. So you get the idea. Okay, let's think of a snack. So I just mentioned a snack idea, which was fruit. So let's do apples is a carb. So fruits are carbs. If they taste sweet, they're carbs. Vegetables, non starchy vegetables are not carbs. They don't taste sweet, they're not carbs. And then peanut butter. <laughs> peanut butter or almond butter, whichever one you like, would be your protein fat just as an idea. Um, lunch, so let's say you're gonna have a light, light healthy lunch. Um, it doesn't have to be light in order to be healthy, but just for ease of conversation, um, we can do a salad. So your salad would actually be, your, your vegetables would be your greens, your lettuce or spinach or whatever it is that you use and whatever other vegetables you add to the salad. So we need to fill this out a little bit. Um, so let's put um, walnuts. Some people like walnuts in their salad sometimes. So I'm gonna call that a protein. It's really a protein fat, but I don't want you to just put walnuts in some dry salad and think that's enough. You really need more protein and more fat. So walnuts can be your protein. Um, this, the oil-based salad dressing 
beer fat because there's olive oil in it or whatever type of fat or oil is in the dressing. Don't ever get low fat dressing. Most low fat dressings have sugar added to them. So, you know, they have to make it taste good somehow. So might as well just keep the oil. So that's going to be your fat. And then for carbs, it kind of depends on like what types of vegetables you put in. So if you put um, any kind of like beans or corn or fruit in your salad, that could count as a carb. Um, sometimes for, for salads, if it's a big salad that's really fleshed out, it has a lot of things in it, I'll let people count the veggies as a carb, not my anorexic clients. They have to like maybe have a carb on the side. Um, but don't think of a salad as just dry vegetables. You know, add your proteins, add your fats, add your energy dense, calorie dense food so that the salad is actually a meal that's gonna last you for a while. Okay, so snack, let's see, what would our snack be? Ooh, I kind of liked our chips and guac idea. So you could have tortilla chips. Tortilla chips would be your carb, and guacamole would be your fat. Done. Easy chips and dip. If you did salsa, salsa is good. Salsa is a vegetable. So you can have that be part of your bonus round. <clears throat> but you might want to get something with some kind of fat or protein in it as well. So you could put hummus as a protein if you desire. Hummus is a really good protein for chips. Um, Okay, so let's think about dinner. Hmm. So I'm trying to think of um, a vegetarian dinner, um, but maybe we can do a couple different ones. So, so let's do, um, so if you're vegetarian, you could do tofu or like I would say fried tofu. It would have a little bit of flavor, a little bit of fat on it. Um, if you're not vegetarian, you could do chicken, chicken or steak or fish or any kind of meat, really. So that would be your protein. So let's let's see. So for carbs, you could do potatoes. If you did mashed potatoes that have you know butter or um, mayonnaise or cream, whatever kind of fatty cream that you would use, that would count as your fat. So potatoes could be your carb. Rice could also be a carb. Potatoes, rice, pasta, any of that counts as a carb. So let's think about what's going to be our fat. So if you if you cook anything in olive oil, that could count as a fat. If you put, like I said, butter in your potatoes, that would count as a fat. Um, the fried tofu, if you fried tofu in oil, that would count as your fat too. So as long as you're getting your fat in there. And then if you want to have a veggie on the side, some kind of greens, you could say spinach or broccoli or green beans. You're always allowed to, green beans, you're always allowed to add vegetables. It's not going to hurt you to add vegetables. Actually, it is possible to eat too many, but most people don't. So you can always add vegetables. So as long as you have your protein, carb, and fat, there's your dinner. So for snack, ooh, let's think about what would be a good snack. So for some people, some kind of dessert. Um, not everybody eats dessert, but let's try to think of maybe like a healthy dessert alternative. So you could do maybe a yogurt, which could be either a dairy yogurt if you tolerate dairy or um, a plant-based yogurt. So there's a lot of yogurt options nowadays. So that would be your protein. And I would encourage you to get full fat yogurt because number one, fat is important. And number two, it's actually more satisfying and you can eat less of it. Um, people who eat a lot of low fat or low calorie products tend to not feel as satisfied and tend to want to eat more other things later. But we're going to call it a protein. So then you could put berries, perhaps some kind of fruit, particularly berries would be your carb. And then if you wanted to get a fat with it, you could do nuts or seeds. So it could be any kind of nuts or seeds, could be almonds, walnuts, pecans, cashews. Um, for seeds, you could use pumpkin seeds, chia seeds, sunflower seeds. 
I'm a big believer in adding nuts and seeds to things. It's an easy way to get some healthy fats and healthy proteins added to your food. So that is our general meal plan. And so you can take this. If you like some of these ideas, you can use them. But just use the structure and try to come up with your own. As long as you have a protein, a fat, and a carb at every meal and some combination of those things at every snack, you're good. You don't have to force yourself to eat six times a day if you're not hungry. That could be a different lesson that we do when we talk about the hunger fullness scale. This is just to show you that it's normal to eat three times a day and it's normal to eat snacks between meals. So don't restrict yourself. Let yourself eat. Let yourself be hungry. Let yourself be full and just kind of listen to your body and give it what it's telling you it needs. So I hope that this was a useful lesson for you and there should be more coming soon. So everybody have a happy holiday, have a great new year, and I will talk to you later. Bye.